Biden in Anchorage, Alaska, to commemorate 22 years since the 9-11 attacks. The commander-in-chief is delivering the speech while returning from a trip to Vietnam and India. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Ben Kennedy is live at the White House following it all. Ben. Eden Calvin, President Biden just spoke moments ago in Alaska saying the nation will never forget the lives lost. He remembers that day 22 years ago while serving in the Senate right here in Washington, D.C. and how the country really came together during this time of terror. President Joe Biden. President Joe Biden marked the tragic anniversary of 9-11 at a military base in Alaska. It's there he'll meet with U.S. troops and address the nation to commemorate the deadliest terrorist attack on U.S. soil. I join you on this solemn day to renew our sacred vow, never forget, never forget, we never forget. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin led the remembrance at the Pentagon where 184 people died when a hijacked American Airlines plane made impact. The men and women of the Department of Defense will always remember. We remember the pain and devastation that our nation endured. A bell rang in lower Manhattan as Vice President Harris, firefighters and law enforcement joined together in a citywide moment of silence for the 2,753 people that died at the World Trade Center. Vincent Paul Abate. Lawrence Christopher Abel. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis also attended the ceremony. 40 lives were remembered in Pennsylvania, where a fourth hijacked jetliner crashed after passengers and the crew fought back to regain control of the plane as it neared the intended target in Washington. And President Biden said he is now working to deter any threats against U.S. security. In the meantime, he is on his way back to Washington as I speak after an overseas G20 summit and also a stop in Vietnam. Reporting live at the White House, Ben Kennedy. Local 10 News. Okay, thanks a lot to Ben. And now to the devastation in the 6.8 magnitude earthquake out of Morocco that has killed more than 2,800 people. That death toll still rising as teams search through the rubble for any signs of life. The epicenter high in the Atlas Mountains just south of uh, Marrakech as thousands offer their assistance either with aid, rescue teams, or by donating blood. Powerful aftershocks continue to rattle nerves in Morocco. The Biden administration has reached out to the Moroccan government to provide immediate assistance. Taking out of Wall Street here, the Dow was actually up today, nearly 90 points, closing at 34,663. Dow fans are riding high after that <laughs> offensive show that Miami put on yesterday. It was an explosion all offense here. The lead between the fans and the Chargers just kept changing all the way to that thrilling finish as Local 10 Sports Director Will Manso shows us. We are here at Dolphins Camp in Miami Gardens. It is a great place to be on this Monday following a victory. Always much more fun around here when the Dolphins do win. They did just that in LA against the Chargers on Sunday to open up the season 36 to 34 the final. And the storyline of this game, yeah, the defense made a stop late, but throughout was two took of a low finding Tyree Kill for big plays early and often. How impressive was this duo? Well, how about this? Two threw for 466 yards. Three touchdowns, 215 of those yards and two of those touchdowns going to the Cheetah. Hill was just running all over the field and Tua was finding him, especially in the big moments late with the Dolphins down in the final minutes. The great touchdown pass to give Miami the lead and eventually the win. Now, how do you stop Hill? It seems like he's unstoppable and he pretty much said so himself after the win. I mean, I, I always feel like that. I always feel like, you know, nobody can, you know, guard me. You know, as, as a competitor, I mean, I feel like if you ask anybody in our room, you know, they'll say the same thing. Can't nobody guard me or them or just, I just feel like that's just a competitive mindset. I would guess the teams are going to look at this film and say, you know what, one guy can't stop the cheetah. I'm not sure if two guys can, maybe three guys, but you got to throw multiple bodies at them. The Chargers were unable to do that, and the Dolphins are back home now at 1-0. They focus now, moving forward to an AFC East battle in New England next Sunday night, but the Dolphins feeling good with that combination now at 1-0. Now, a little for sports in Miami Gardens. I'm Will Manso, Local 10 News. Undefeated, but a long season. Great team. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Fun to watch. Monday Night Football kicking off as well tonight. The New York Jets hosting the Buffalo Bills. Four-time MVP quarterback Aaron Rodgers is making his highly anticipated debut with the Jets. And you can only watch the game right here on Local 10 starting at 8 o'clock tonight. And then be sure to stay with us after the game for Local 10 News at 11. Only Local 10 has the shocking security video that jolted people awake last night. And now they're hoping police can track down these guys who roll through their neighborhood with guns blazing. 
We'll give you a closer look at the suspect's car in our one and only exclusive All New at Six. And controversy in Chile, uh, Chile, a march honoring the thousands killed under the Pinochet regime marred by violence, bringing out the riot police. And I'm Janice Fernandez in the newsroom with the incredible story of a little boy becoming a lifesaver because of something he saw on TV. When his therapist suddenly lost consciousness in the pool, he knew what to do. I'll show you coming up on Local 10 News. Take Local 10 online with you wherever you're headed. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest social media news and interaction. Certified meteorologist Betty Davis. And I'm hurricane specialist and storm surge expert Michael Lowry. We have seen firsthand how Hurricane Ian devastated our neighbors. Even with such catastrophic devastation, lives were spared because families had warning and a plan. It only takes one storm to impact our way of life. Your local 10 weather authority team is here. Always watching, always preparing to keep South Florida safe and informed. Stay connected wherever you go with the Max Tracker Hurricane app. Local 10, your weather authority. Number one local news, number one national news, local 10 news at 6, and world news tonight at 6.30. One powerful hour of news. DeSantis signing a controversial bill into law. At 6 p.m., Calvin Hughes and Nicole Perez bring you the top stories in South Florida. A one and only exclusive. We're learning more. World news tonight with David Muir, bringing you stories making headlines around the country. The major development tonight of the war in Ukraine. Local 10 news at 6, and world news tonight. Your number one. Another update for you on that breaking news from the top of the hour. An Amber Alert has been canceled for the Maradiaga family. Two-month-old Christian, one-year-old Ariana, and 19-year-old Marjorie were all found safe. Well, the summer's extreme heat has led to calls for more protection for people who have to work outside. Miami-Dade County Commissioners today holding a public hearing on the issue. Local 10's Christina Vasquez is live with what she's learned. Christina. And that newly proposed heat ordinance here in Miami-Dade, it did pass its committee stop today on a 4-1 to one vote, which means it goes before the full Board of County Commission in October. But the committee members did hear from a variety of perspectives today. ¿Qué queremos? The advocacy group We Count with support from the union representing Jackson Healthcare Workers. Because they're in need of water, shade, and rest. Hosting a rally to support a proposed heat ordinance in Miami-Dade that would provide outdoor worker protections to include 10-minute shaded water breaks every two hours on days when the heat index hits 90 degrees. We would be the first county in the nation if this passes with this type of ordinance to protect outdoor workers. After passing its first reading in July, support these essentials workers by voting yes on agua, sombra y descanso, water, shade and rest. The proposed ordinance making a stop Thank in this Miami-Dade Community Health Committee, where committee members heard from those in support. The heat this summer is like nothing that we've ever experienced before, and it's only getting worse. Our members since 1970 have been complying with OSHA standards that have been in place for the past 60 years. 
and from members of the construction and agricultural industry to include small business owners. We ask for your no vote or deferment. I am a firm believer if you're breaking the law, we need to take care of you. Sam McCursio of the family run Sam McCursio and Sons Farm telling us he supports enforcement action against bad actors in the agricultural industry. What about everybody else? Doesn't understand why the ordinance doesn't include other industry sectors with outdoor workers and believes the county level ordinance is unnecessary when worker protections already exist, he says, under OSHA. Why do we need to put more bureaucracy over landowners and business owners? The best protection for the people has always come from the local government. And that was the commissioner who co-sponsored this newly proposed heat ordinance. He adds that OSHA does not include a specific heat standard. And he basically said his next steps on the range of issues that were flagged today was to try to bring all these community stakeholders to the table on Friday. We have more on that on our website. That's local10.com. Reporting live for you, I'm Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. Okay, Christina, thank you. Let's go ahead and take a live look out of our Pembroke Park Tower Cam on this Monday. Beautiful views. I know we've been talking about how hot it is, but if we're looking at this from a glass half full perspective, <laughs> we've seen a lot worse, right, yeah, Betty? Got to stay positive. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. But you're right. It was warm. We were a few degrees above normal with our high temperature. We did 93 in Miami normal for this point in the season uh, instead of 90 should actually be 89 degrees in Fort Lauderdale was one degrees above the normal high uh, today. All right, few showers developing. Most of the action has been inland. I'm keeping an eye on this shower west of Chrome Avenue in Miami Dade. Maybe we get a few sprinkles building out toward Kendall Lakes or the hammocks. That's going to be our best shot. I think at some showers before the sun goes down because once the sun goes down, I'm expecting any rainfall nearby to fade and we'll be left with scattered clouds and overnight tranquil low temperature around 80 in Miami. Here's the setup a front stalled from the eastern US back down toward the Gulf Coast. We're on the side where we have the chance slight chance for at least the shower even heading for tomorrow. But the bigger story still is Hurricane Lee, which is about 600 miles south of Bermuda. Major hurricane category three on a track that will keep it away from us. So that part of our weather story has not changed. We'll continue to track Lee, though. It's uh, simply just a very interesting storm to watch. Meantime, back on the home front, the rain that does develop tomorrow, the focus for showers will be west of us. We won't rule out a stray shower on Wednesday. All the while, we'll keep tabs on Lee. Finally, at some point on Wednesday, should start to take that curl toward the north over the western Atlantic waters. Here's your seven day planner. Rain chance is only 20 30 percent for the next several days. Higher rain chance for the weekend. Get ready for another day of high temperatures in the low 90s. Calvin. OK, Betty, thanks a lot. Federal agents showing off a big drug seizure here in South Florida. We're going to explain how they seized all of this. All new at six. And demonstrators disrupting the morning rush in Jerusalem as the country's Supreme Court gets ready to rule on a controversial new law. Plus, we're going to tell you the best way to see a newly discovered comet that is coming close to Earth tomorrow morning. Number one local news. Number one national news. Local 10 News at 6 and World News Tonight at 6.30. One powerful hour of news. DeSantis signing a controversial bill into law. At 6 p.m., Calvin Hughes and Nicole Perez bring you the top stories in South Florida. A one and only exclusive. We're learning more. World News Tonight with David Muir. Bringing you stories making headlines around the country. The major development tonight of the war in Ukraine. Local 10 News at 6 and World News Tonight. Your number one evening news team.
Hey, Mike Martinez here from American Impact Windows and Doors, where your safety is our business. We've partnered with some of the most amazing brands in the industry to protect your home from not just hurricanes, but also from potential intruders. Protect your home. Protect your family. Order your impact windows and doors today. You can get 0% financing and no payments for 24 months. Call 888-444-5902. American Impact Windows and Doors. Your safety is our business. Controversy in Chile, where people marched through the streets of Santiago, marking 50 years since the coup d'etat that put General Augusto Pinochet in power. For 17 years, Pinochet ruled with an iron fist. At least 3,200 people were executed or reported missing. Pinochet remained in power until 1990 when he stepped down, but remained commander of the army. He later became a senator for life before being arrested in London in 1998. He was put under house arrest, and there were more than 300 charges still pending against him when he died in December of 2006. Well, today's march honored Pinochet's victims. A similar event yesterday was interrupted by a group of 50 people in hoodies who threw stones at the presidential palace. Riot police brought in tanks and water cannons to get the crowd under control. For more demonstrations in Jerusalem today ahead of an Israeli Supreme Court hearing about the government's controversial judicial overhaul, the entire 15-judge court will convene tomorrow to hear an appeal against a law limiting the court's power, which was passed by the government back in July. The murder manhunt continues in Pennsylvania, and the killer on the run managed to get through a police perimeter with 400 officers searching for him. Daniello Cavalcante also has a new look. He's clean-shaven and wearing a green hoodie. Police say Cavalcante drove 26 miles to a former co-worker's house where he was seen on a doorbell camera trying to talk with that colleague who was not home. Police found his stolen van abandoned behind a barn after it had run out of gas. Police believe Cavalcante is still in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. They're urging people in the Philadelphia area to lock their cars. A $20,000 reward is offered in the search. And next at 5:30, a family demanding justice after their loved one was shot and killed at a hotel. They want to know why police haven't arrested the person who pulled the trigger. And a family tragedy in Southwest Miami-Dade, where two teenage brothers were gunned down, and detectives are still searching for the shooter. Plus, he is just 12 years old, but he knew exactly what to do when his therapist suddenly lost consciousness in the deep end of the pool. That story when Local 10 News comes right back.
Hey, Mike Martinez here from American Impact Windows and Doors, where your safety is our business. We've partnered with some of the most amazing brands in the industry to protect your home from not just hurricanes, but also from potential intruders. Protect your home. Protect your family. Order your impact windows and doors today. You can get 0% financing and no payments for 24 months. Call 888-444-5902. American Impact Windows and Doors. Your safety is our business. Local 10 News starts right now. Right now, 5.30, a family tragedy in Southwest Miami-Dade after two teen brothers were gunned down over the weekend. And police say it happened in an abandoned home Saturday. A neighbor says they heard those shots ring out and then a car speeding away. They saw that happen too. Local 10's Hat Silvello reports on the search for the shooter. Students here at South Day Senior High School are just starting to find out about the tragic incident. This is the high school one of the brothers attended. This as detectives try to figure out the why. A young life cut short, only 16 years old. We now know Osvaldo Martinez Marquez was a student here at South Day Senior High School. He and his brother Alexis were both shot and killed. He posted about a guy, um, his friend being killed over here on Saturday. We talked to students on campus today about the tragic incident. Just some of the students know about it. Yeah, nobody really knows about it that much. Over the weekend, security cameras capture what sounds like a gunshot. Seconds later, a red car seen speeding away. Saturday, shortly before 6 p.m., is when detectives say the brothers were killed. Both teens found shot to death inside an abandoned house on Southwest 175th Street in West Perrine. The same surveillance camera captures the commotion shortly after it happened. So far, no arrest and neighbors who heard the shots too afraid to speak because of possible retaliation. So at this point, we don't have a suspect. We don't have a motive, but we do have a $10,000 reward. If you have any information on this case, you should call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. That number is 305-471-TIPS. Reporting from Southwest Miami-Dade, I'm Hatso Vala, Local 10 News. All right, Hassel, thank you for that. Police are investigating a shooting at a hotel in Northwest 12th Street in Northwest Miami-Dade. A woman shot and taken to the hospital. Officers are still searching for her shooter. And police are also searching for a suspect after a deadly shooting in Northwest Miami-Dade. Witnesses there say they heard yelling and then gunshots near the 1600 block of Northwest 83rd Street in the afternoon yesterday. Police say that victim was driven to the hospital but sadly died from his injuries. Police say the person who drove that victim to the hospital is not cooperating with detectives. And police have identified the victim as a man named Matthew Kennedy. The shooting happened just before noon on Sunday. If you know something about this case, call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. You could be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. A crime alert in Coral Gables where a man was shot and killed at the Gables Inn. His family wants to know why police have not made any arrests. Local 10's Rosh Lowe is live with this developing story. Rosh. Let me tell you, this family is really upset. They tell me their loved one was murdered. The reason for no arrests? Miami-Dade police telling me this was a case of self-defense. Well, tell me what happened here. A dispute, not a, not a, 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 a physical a dispute, a verbal dispute. He walked out of that office right there and was shot two times. Family members of 30-year-old Jamil Davis holding signs saying he was murdered at the Gables Inn Saturday. He can't be heard, so I'm going to be heard for him. The police are telling us all indications are that this is self-defense. Self-defense, huh? How is it self-defense? And he, he was, was shot from behind? And there's a glass bulletproof Right right now, if I was breaking into someone's house, they can't shoot me as I'm running off. Self-defense, my Stand your ground, my The family says there's a bulletproof glass in the lobby. You'll see 
see that there's a bulletproof glass you have to talk through. He had to walk from behind a bulletproof glass and a locked door to shoot him. Self-defense how? What was your cousin doing here? Do you know? He lived before that. He rented. He got a room for two days. You got. You guys got his money. He wasn't a problem then. The family is demanding to see the surveillance video. Do you know if there's video? Just as sure as it happened right there in that office it is. And they say he didn't have a gun. And if the police say, you know what, it was an altercation and... Show us the footage. They show footages to everything else. I'm right now like, well, when they started doing that, showing people murders on, on TVs and all, uh, show us the footage and we'll, you know, we'll get us a, we'll, yeah, we'll get a piece of mind from it. We spoke with the owners of the Gables Inn off camera. They tell us Jamil trespassed into an employee's only area and assaulted the clerk. They say he was not shot in the back. They also say the video is extremely clear. Okay, so this comes down to this surveillance video. We requested the video from Miami-Dade police. We have not gotten it yet. And then we told the owners of the Gables Inn, look, just show us the surveillance video. They say they cannot do that at this point because of legal advice. So we're hoping to see this video at some point soon. And this family, all they want is to see that surveillance video. We'll keep you posted. For now, I'm live in Coral Gables, Rosh Lowe, Local 10 News. All right, keep us updated. Thank you, Rosh. A tragic update now. The line worker electrocuted on the job has been identified. Police say 30-year-old Jorge Hernandez was servicing power lines when he touched a live wire. This happened Friday near Northwest 1st Street in West Flagler. Hernandez was taken to the hospital where he died. We're watching a crash right now on the Dolphin Expressway. It's 535. Janice, what do you see out there? Yeah, seeing some pretty heavy delays, but that's really the only incident I'm watching right now. As we take a look at I-95, this is at Northwest 135th Street. Northbound lanes definitely very slow right now, looking more like a parking lot at this time. But if you're heading southbound, you've really got nothing to worry about on I-95, and the express lanes are open and looking great. But let's take it to that crash, though, on the Dolphin Expressway. It's going to be as you are heading westbound, right around the Palmetto Expressway. So it looks like on the approach to where that crash Crashes. Your speeds are coming in pretty fine, but right after that crash, it's going to get pretty slow for you as you continue westbound with your speeds clocking in at 10 miles per hour. All right, Janice, thank you. The Red Cross helping out a resident in need after their Dania Beach home was destroyed by a fire today. This morning, Fire Rescue worked to put out that fire at Southwest 7th Avenue at 1st Street. The only person inside that home was able to get out safely. But a family of eight has also been displaced after their home was destroyed by fire yesterday. Investigators say that fire began in the garage and just quickly spread. All of the adults and children in the two-story home made it out. It took firefighters, though, about three hours to put out that stubborn fire. And firefighters dealing with yet another fire, this one in Coconut Creek this morning in the 4900 block of Northwest 6th Street. So far, no reports of any injuries there. Well, the buzz on South Beach is all about the major makeover for the Clevelander. The owners will want to put up a 30-story building for affordable housing. We'll show you how well that's worked out for other South Florida cities all new at 6. A young South Florida boy somehow finding the strength to pull a full-grown man out of the deep end. The whole thing caught on camera. Plus, we're now seeing some new video from a deadly police shooting that shows what the woman who was killed was actually doing before officers showed up. But first, a live look outside our weather cameras right now to the gorgeous day here in South Florida. It's hot, but not as hot as it has been these past two months, being a little bit of a reprieve. But we see rain in the forecast. Betty is next with the answer. A controversial bill into law. At 6 p.m., Calvin Hughes and Nicole Perez bring you the top stories in South Florida. A one and only exclusive. We're learning more. World News Tonight with David Muir, bringing you stories making headlines around the country. The major development tonight in the war in Ukraine. Local 10 News at 6 and World News Tonight, your number one evening news team.
Hey, Mike Martinez here from American Impact Windows and Doors, where your safety is our business. We've partnered with some of the most amazing brands in the industry to protect your home from not just hurricanes, but also from potential intruders. Protect your home. Protect your family. Order your Impact Windows and Doors today. You can get 0% financing and no payments for 24 months. Call 888-444-5902. American Impact Windows and Doors. Your safety is our business. a new video of a deadly police shooting in Ohio last month. A pregnant woman was shot and killed after officers say she tried to use her car as a weapon. Police say this surveillance video shows 21-year-old Takiya Young putting bottles of liquor into her handbag at a grocery store. An employee calls police and told them she was still in the parking lot. Two officers confronted Young, one stood in front of her car, the other at the driver's window. Police say when Young moved the car forward, the officer in the front fired through the windshield while jumping out of the way. Young's unborn child also died. Her family wants the officer who shot her to be fired and criminally charged. A big boom in Boone County, Missouri yesterday as demolition crews took out an old bridge over the Missouri River. More than 12 and a half million cars went over the bridge every year, but it was dangerously deteriorating. Now crews must remove the six million pounds of steel and debris that used to be the bridge so they can start building a new one. In the meantime, eastbound traffic is being diverted onto the westbound bridge. The sick American caver who can't climb out of Turkey's deepest cave could soon, though, be seeing some sunlight once again. Mark Dickey has been trapped for more than uh, trapped more than 3,400 feet below ground since August the 31st when he suddenly became critically ill. He can't climb, so he's being carried out on a stretcher by a rescue team. The doctors let him walk for very few steps just because this helped himself also for his for his uh, psychological uh, well-being. At last report, they expect to have him out of that cave by the end of the day. And we're seeing an incredible rescue in Wellington as young boy is somehow finding the strength to save his therapist when he suddenly stopped breathing. Janice in the newsroom shows this. Janice. Louis, this boy is just 12 years old, but he knew what to do in an emergency, and the whole thing was caught on camera. That's 12-year-old Austin McMillan in the blue, pulling his behavioral therapist, Jason Peckett, from the deep end of his family pool. As Austin turns to get help, you see Jason slip down in the water again. He's unconscious. The seventh grader comes over again and pulls him into the shallow end. I pulled him out of the water, and then uh, I pulled him to that shore over there. When Austin realized Jason wasn't breathing, he knew what to do. I gave him CPR. And where did you learn to do that? I just saw it on TV. But his technique was perfect. First you see Austin yelling for help, then he began chest compressions. Screaming, yelling in a way, in a frantic way that I've never seen him ever before. So I immediately dropped all my groceries and ran through the gate. While dad called 911 and jumped in to help, Jason began gasping for air. Austin's CPR had worked. I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for him. He's an absolute hero and he always will be. I am so proud of him. I, he is so brave, and I can't even imagine being in that position. Don't freak out. Don't panic. And try to learn from the situation and try to help the person. I'm so grateful for you, bud. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's just so incredible, right? Well, all, well the McMallons rather hosted a CPR training class for friends and family this past weekend, and they plan to keep educating everyone they can because anyone can be a lifesaver if they just know what to do in an emergency. It's such an important and simple technique, but you never know when you yeah. need to use it. Important skill to have, mm -hmm. indeed. Thank you, Janice. Caught on camera, a family driving in Utah when an office chair flew across the interstate and right into their windshield. The whole thing was caught on their trash cam video. Something flying towards us. Oh, that's going to hit us. What was that? Like, what hit us? I didn't even see what it was. A woman is heard screaming, then another is heard saying, I'm fine. They're lucky the chair didn't go through the windshield, and they're very thankful they had the dash cam so they could go back and see exactly what happened. They say the chair was just sitting in the middle of the road when it was hit by another driver and went flying. Thank goodness no one was hurt. That is amazing. You would have had to bleep me a lot if that had been my <laughs> dash cam year, video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look outside from our Mount Sinai Medical Center Tower cam. Beautiful evening on yeah. tap as we start this work week. Hey, Not Betty. a bad end of the day. Mm -hmm. Hi, Betty. Hey, I, I was just reminiscing about the days when it used to feel like 110 degrees in mm. Miami. Remember <laughs> that? Oh. Remember that? Oh, not, not now. <laughs> that is not the case right now. We have feels like temperatures upper 90s. Miami, it feels like 98. Pembroke Pines feels like 102, and so does Key West. Our temperature, though, is actually showing in the upper 90s right now. East wind at 10 miles per hour. Nice looking beach day, that is for sure. The showers that are developing, they're off to the west. They are inland and there aren't even that many. I'm still keeping an eye on one just west of the hammocks. This may deliver a couple of sprinkles or raindrops over toward the hammocks, but I'm not expecting this to run as far east of say Pinecrest or Coral Gables. Our Skycast model is showing that the showers for Dade are distant relative to Miami, so off to the west. We're not too concerned about rainfall ruining our night out on the town. Temperatures will drop into the mid 80s between 8 and 10 p.m. And then overnight we should bottom out right about 80 degrees. We'll keep a light northeast wind for the overnight hours. Check out the water vapor imagery. There are some signs of dry air in the mid levels over the Florida Peninsula. High pressure is dominating, encompasses South Florida, and it's around this high pressure that Hurricane Lee is being steered. And notice all the deep tropical moisture is tied up with Hurricane Lee. And we're not going to get into that because Lee simply is not our system. We will look, though, for more moisture available for rainfall later on this week. For tomorrow, high pressure still hanging on, as well as the dry air per our moisture tracker. But watch the changes that start to unfold as Lee lifts northward over the western Atlantic. The farther north it gets, the higher our rain chance goes by Friday, Saturday. You can see how we've got this increase in moisture ahead of a cold front uh, that glides down toward the north part of our state. So we'll look for rainfall to start to make a comeback, maybe a bit more widespread for our neighborhoods. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Until then, the showers that do develop are probably going to favor uh, the western suburbs or maybe even far west than our places or homes like Weston or even uh, the Medley area. Let's check in on the tropics really quickly to see what's going on out here. There's Hurricane Lee. There's also Margo, a Category 1 hurricane way out over the Atlantic waters. A couple other disturbances that we'll monitor, including this one over the far eastern Atlantic. We'll watch it to see if it eventually evolves into a tropical depression or storm over the next several days. But obviously, everything out there uh, is going to be far enough removed from us that we're not too concerned at this point in the hurricane season. We're in the peak but not too concerned about anything. All right, check out the seven day planner. High temperatures, low 90s. Rain chance at just 20% tomorrow, but by the weekend, it's going up to 40, 50%. Christy? Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Betty, for that. All right, amateur astronomers out there, break out the old telescope. The newly discovered comet Nishimura will be closest to the Earth around sunrise tomorrow. It's already visible with the naked eye. Your best chance to see it is to look at the horizon just before sunrise. The comet will only be about 78 million miles away, but it may be tough to spot because it will be just north of the eastern horizon, and that's the sun's brightness. It could overpower it. Nishimura will be closest to the sun on Sunday, which might be your very best chance to spot it. NASA says that this comet will be back in December.
So there you go. I'm going to watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> you get exactly. up that sun break. I'm not going to watch it get to, up there uh, to yeah, see that. No, I'm okay. okay. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, U.S. Okay. officials are demanding SpaceX make some changes before launching another rocket. The FAA laid out 63 new steps a space company must take to improve its infrastructure. It comes months after SpaceX tried to launch a powerful rocket into space, but that launch ended in an explosion that destroyed the launch pad and sent debris flying everywhere. A kayaker in Phoenix made a new pal. The last time he went paddling, a wild donkey came right up to him asking for help. <laughs> the donkeys are often seen around Lake Pleasant. Travis Ward says he sees them all the time, but last week, after he got out of the water, one came very close and kept getting closer. He got closer and I saw that the, there were thorns in his nose and his ear as well. He was being very like, very still, very calm, and uh, he just let me get all of them out. Well, those thorns likely came from the thousands of cigarro cacti that surround the lake. Travis says he pulled out about 40 thorns before the grateful donkey gave him a big bray of thanks before moving on. You know, animals are very smart How like that. They smart. can, yeah, I know. They're smarter than they and they look. <laughs> than us, and probably. Yeah, and how nice no that... arguments there, Chrissy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. great. Okay. All right. Well, you may know Lisa Edelstein for her roles in TV shows from The West Wing to House MD to maybe The Kaminsky Method. Well, she, when she was locked down during the pandemic, she found that she had a different way to express herself. She started painting. And actually, she turned out to be a really good, amazing artist. Her first West Coast exhibition opens up this coming Saturday at a gallery in L.A. So I got myself some adult coloring books and I just hated all the images in them. They were not interesting to me. So I thought, oh, I'll just make my own coloring book. Sometimes they're posed because even in the pose, the people that are in the picture can't avoid telling their story, but m mostly they are caught moments. Well, besides art and acting, she also is a writer and a director. She's multi-talented. However, she is actually married to a real-life painter, and his name is Robert Russell. Very Hockney-esque. I like it. <laughs> I'm right. so really interesting. Good. All right. Yeah. Now for the ultimate piece of Star Wars history. You're looking at a long-lost model of an X-Wing fighter used in the original 1977 movie. It's now going up for auction with a starting bid of just 400000 This model was used in close-ups during the final battle scene where the Rebel Alliance fought the Empire above the desert star. The auction takes place October 14th and 15th. I would love to have that. My birthday's coming up in, in November, but so I'm just saying. $400,000 yeah. later? Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't it. think so. Come on. I mean, I'll get you a picture of it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And still ahead, right here. <laughs> Only on 10, a neighborhood on edge, as these guys roll through in the middle of the night with guns blazing. We're hearing from terrified residents in our one and only exclusive. We're also speaking with scared residents in the Broward neighborhood where they heard more than a dozen gunshots inside a rental home. But first, see how one local elected leader used today's 9-11 memorial ceremony to help people get prepared for any emergency. The Local 10 News comes right back. Certified meteorologist Betty Davis. And I'm hurricane specialist and storm surge expert Michael Lari. We have seen firsthand how Hurricane Ian devastated our neighbors. Even with such catastrophic devastation, lives were spared because families had warning and a plan. It only takes one storm to impact our way of life. Your local 10 Weather Authority team is here. Always watching, always preparing to keep South Florida safe and informed. Stay connected wherever you go with the Max Tracker Hurricane app. Local 10, your weather authority.
Number one local news. Number one national news. Local 10 News at 6 and World News Tonight at 6.30. One powerful hour of news. DeSantis signing a controversial bill into law. At 6 p.m., Calvin Hughes and Nicole Perez bring you the top stories in South Florida. A one and only exclusive. We're learning more. World News Tonight with David Muir bringing you stories making headlines around the country. The major development tonight of the war in Ukraine. Local 10 News at 6 and World News Tonight. Your number one evening news team. Miami Gardens held a special September 11th ceremony this morning at Dr. Lester B. Brown Park on Northwest 32nd Avenue. Miami Gardens City Councilman Robert Stevens III led a memorial service for the victims of the 9-11 attacks and also unveiled a new Stop the Bleed kit to help keep severely injured people alive until emergency medical professionals can get there. Officers have applied tourniquets on themselves, fellow officers as well as citizens saving their lives. In today's increasingly violent society, this type of equipment and tactical considerations have a valid place in our training. Right? Look, you're going to do like this. Well, the kids are part of an initiative to prepare and encourage people to be immediate responders, confidently providing life-saving help when they can. And that will do it for us at 5.30. Time now for the news at 6. Right now, tracking major Hurricane Lee. When will it turn? Your weather authority has the latest model. Everybody loves it's hurt it. right Everybody. now. Everybody. All out manhunt after a beloved father's murdered in Wilton Manors. What we just learned. Only on 10, a frightening scene caught on camera. A neighborhood woken by gunfire. A desperate escape. Deputies never expected this during a high speed chase. Home sweet home for Leo Messi, where the Inner Miami Star is putting down roots. And I'm Will Manso with the Dolphins. What Tua and Tyreek are saying about their supercharged win in LA. The news at six starts right now. And good evening off the top at six tonight. Hurricane Lee is getting stronger again in the Atlantic Ocean. It is once again a major hurricane. So when will Lee make that long expected turn north and away from South Florida? It's the peak of hurricane season and your weather authority is here. Hurricane expert and storm surge specialist Michael Lowry is standing by. But we begin with chief certified meteorologist Betty Davis. Betty. Hurricane Lee is a category three hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. It is moving west northwest at seven miles per hour and as of the five o'clock advisory, it's about 600 miles south of Bermuda. Here's the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center and they do show that curve, if you will, happening right about the middle part of the week around Wednesday, and then it passes near or west of Bermuda and then continues to make its way northward over the western Atlantic. Michael, the one thing we do note in this intensity forecast is the weakening trend, and that may be, if there is some good news for New England, that by the time it gets in their vicinity, it's a weaker system. Still, though, there will be some impacts. 
Yeah, Betty, it's looking increasingly likely that New England is going to see some impacts from this hurricane. We'll talk about that in just a minute. As Eaton mentioned at the top of the show, this is the peak week of the hurricane season, and you certainly know it when you look across the Atlantic today. At the center of your screen is Hurricane Lee, uh, back to a major hurricane. On the far right part of your screen, that's now Hurricane Margot. That is the fifth hurricane, and well ahead of schedule, I should mention. We typically don't see our fifth hurricane in the Atlantic until the end of September. Lee, though, so far has managed to to avoid land, but that may change here in the coming days. First, we have to get past Bermuda. As you can see, the water temperatures very warm across the entire Atlantic. We have a cool wake, though, in the um, uh, left behind by Hurricanes Franklin and Nadalia over the last few weeks. Uh, this storm is going to pass over those cooler waters, but still warm enough to support a hurricane, a Category 1 hurricane, which is what the forecast is, but a weaker hurricane nonetheless. The big question, though, for those people that are living in the Northeast or have interest up there into New England is, you know, where where is this going to go? Is it going to get close enough uh, for them to feel it? You know, there's one scenario where this is a, uh, we have high pressure to the east and it's a weaker high pressure that keeps this sort of turning out to sea and farther away from the coast. But today, the computer models have really gone into the camp of this getting close enough to the coast. Stronger high pressure, not going to allow this to turn out to sea, so get close enough to the coast to have some impacts. Still several days away, we're talking about this weekend for potential impacts into New England, coastal Maine, into the uh, Cape of Massachusetts. These are all areas that we'll have to watch for this one. And regardless, up the East Coast, big, long swell propagating. This is uh, good for surfers, but not good for the average swimmer to get in the water. It's going to be some rough seas all across the eastern seaboard from this one. And depending how close this gets, we may have uh, bigger problems in terms of the coastal erosion farther up. Something we're going to keep an eye to. But Eden and Calvin, thankfully, this one, no threat here in South Florida. Back over to you. Okay, Michael, thank you. And we continue working at a developing story. The Amber Alert for a young family abducted in Palm Beach County has been canceled. We've learned two-month-old Christian, one-year-old Ariana, and 19-year-old Marjorie were all found safe after being taken from their home in Lake Worth this morning. No word yet on if the suspect, Santos Escobar, will be facing charges. Crime alert tonight in a murder investigation in Wilton Manor's neighbors say they heard more than a dozen shots fired inside a home. And local 10's Alex Finney spoke with the victim's family and is live with the on force today. Alex. And so, Calvin, you know, this whole situation is just really, really sad. According to the victim's family in this case, the gunman was someone that they knew and that they knew very, very well. What we can tell you is that officers got out here to the scene late last night. They transported the victim to the hospital, but sadly, he did not make it. We are now hearing new details from family about the man shot and killed at this rental home in Wilton Manors. Everybody loves it's hurt him. right everybody, now. Everybody, everybody loves is hurt. Like this is very shocking. Like for somebody to do something very good to person. someone to a good person. 44 year old Arlen Kata had been renting out this home for about a year where he lived with his two kids, 11 and 16 years old. Officers were called to the home off of Northwest 28th Court and 6th Avenue late Sunday night after reports of a shooting. Oh Neighbors God. hearing some of the commotion. The neighbor across the street from the house to you said that there were like 14 shots. Family and close friends tell us that Kata was shot and killed by his own best friend. We're hearing from those close to him that the two had been in business together, but that business relationship went south about a month ago. And we know that he had a dispute with his best friend, Anthony. Family also says that the best friend had been terrorizing Kata and his family ever since the two parted ways. The father of three from South Florida was rushed to the hospital, where sadly he was pronounced dead. I just thank God they didn't touch the kids. Too. And I know that they're very traumatized. Because they are very. All they know is their dad. Mm -hmm. Every time we come here, they're with their dad. Yeah, and absolutely just such a sad and heartbreaking story here, a heartbreaking end for this family. Now, what I can tell you as for those two kids, uh, those close to the family as well as family members tell me that they are right now with their grandmother. We also know that Kata is a grandfather. He has a 20 year old daughter as well. Of course, as the family continues to pick up the pieces, what I can tell you is that the investigation is still ongoing. No word yet as to the suspect in this matter and in terms of where the case stands right now, but we will keep you posted. For now, this is the very latest live in Wilton Manors tonight. Alex Finney, Local 10 News. 
Now to video you'll only see on local 10 news a scary scene caught on camera. Someone opening fire in a quiet neighborhood. Several homeowners sharing similar footage gunmen driving by and firing shots. Local 10's Andrew Perez is live with the exclusive Andrew. So here's the thing. We reported this incident ourselves to Miami Dade police and I want to step out of the way because as you can see behind me officers showed up right away. They say they're taking this really seriously because this might have just been a joyride, but it was definitely a crime. Five rounds sent flying, but apparently into the air. But it's coming home. You know, the violence is actually coming home. Residents rattled, wanting answers as bullet casings litter the street. It doesn't appear anyone was targeted, but recklessly shooting, it's just as bad. Anybody could get shot. You know, you could be shooting up, but gotta come down a bullet, so someone could get killed. We all heard that and the dogs were going crazy. Daniel Gianuzzi says it was around 2 a.m. Saturday. He heard the shots and then he froze. He was waiting for the aftermath. I was waiting for sirens or something or, or commotion afterwards, but I didn't hear anything. My son heard the shots, the gunshots, and the first time in the morning, he was very scared. Residents left a bit uneasy near North Spur Drive and Northeast Second Court. This is Northeast Miami-Dade. Many in the area weren't really sure what they heard until several neighbors started looking through their surveillance cameras for evidence. Sharing the videos, getting the word out, but no one had reported the incident to police just yet. Well, we did after seeing this beyond reckless ride and now officers are gathering evidence. Residents telling us what they really want is peace of mind. It doesn't happen right here. It'll happen like on the main drags and stuff like that, but never on these these little streets, it doesn't happen. And what's scary is there's new development going up. Can you imagine what's going to happen then? So back out here live, police are just on the other side of the street. They've been speaking with witnesses, kind of looking and gathering those shell casings to compare and analyze them, gathering additional video. They're urging residents right now to report these incidents as soon as they happen, even if they're unsure so they can investigate and also document it, frankly, for the future. You never know. They're reminding gun owners also that what you saw in those videos is a serious crime worth charges. If you have any information whatsoever that can help police, give Miami-Dade police a call right away. We're live in Northeast Miami-Dade. I'm Andrew Perez, Local 10 News. Okay.